I'm Momtaz and today I'm joined by vocalist Sohini Alam. Sohini, welcome to the studio. Thank you for having me. So you're actually a third generation singer. You grew up with music. What was it like growing up in such a creative environment? It was really wonderful actually. I got to uh, sing with my cousins and my aunts and my grandparents. Uh, so we had music around all the time. My mother would teach it to other people. So it was, it was really nice. I, I got to listen to a lot of music growing up. And in terms of singing, what language were you actually singing in? Uh, I grew up, I tr my training was primarily in, in Bengali music. So, I mean, I grew up listening to a lot of different kind of music, but my training and my singing was usually in Bengali. So in terms of what you're doing today, you obviously sing in Bengali, you also sing in English, but you work with musicians from all over the world. So what's it been like kind of bringing that Bangla element into what you're doing? Well, the thing is, in London, there are musicians from all over the world, which is a really amazing resource. Um, and it's, it's, it's a place where a lot of people have come to, you know, call home, maybe because like me, they are parents of immigrants. Um, and it's been really interesting to be able to see uh, and to look for and find commonalities between our different kinds of music. Uh, and so for me, it was natural to sing in Bengali, but I heard the music differently from how my parents would hear it. And so my interpretations of the music, or when I worked with musicians from here, tended to be slightly different than what had come previously. So in terms of the music you're creating, mm -hmm. um, how much of a conscious effort do you actually make to make sure there's a Bengali inspiration, a bit of Bangla in there? Is that something that's important to you or does it just happen if it fits creatively? It's important to me depending on why I'm working on a piece of music. So for a piece that I'm doing for theatre, um, its primary purpose is to serve the story. Uh, and if the story happens to be a Mingoli one, then that's a whole different case as well. So it really depends. Um, generally speaking, I, I obviously I do favour uh, singing in Bengali and highlighting where I'm from, and what my heritage is, simply because, um, as I said, my interpretation of it is different. And the world music scene, um, a lot of parts of the world are represented. Bengali is, I would say, generally underrepresented on the world music scene. So it's nice to be able to actually work on that as well. It's interesting to hear that because actually there's a lot of um, heritage in terms of the singing and the music side of Bangla culture, mm. but it's not that represented, as you say, in world music. So what role can you personally play in being the role model, in being the person that people look up to? Uh, because there's a lot of young people who want to get into music, but without having those role models, you know, it's difficult for them to feel confident about themselves. Um. Well, I don't, I don't know about being a role model, and, and to be fair, um, what I said about us being up, underrepresented, underrepresented we have been, mm -hmm. but that is changing. And so there are already a lot of people who you know, are, are contemporaries and, and role models to me as well. Um, so the good thing is there is a, there is a music scene coming up, uh, includes people like Zoya Nidris Rahman, like Kishan Khan. Um, so there's a, there, you know, there's a lot happening in terms of a Bengali becoming part of the world music scene. And for me, it's just really nice that I'm here to see this because there was the original wave of, of um, State of Bengal, Sampai, bless him, he, he you know, started something uh, along with that entire Asian underground movement in the 90s. And now there's a whole new wave of music coming out um, that's very different and caters to a very different audience now that there's internet and, and so, so when you mention on. this audience who mm. are the people who are listening to contemporary Bengali music at the moment is it just people who understand the language or are you actually seeing people from I don't know different backgrounds sort of encountering it for the first time and also what are their reactions to it um, well for us again because London is such a cosmopolitan city we find that uh, at least half of our audience tends to be non-Bengali. And also because we're, we're trying to actually perform in spaces that are meant for everyone. Because just like other kinds of world music, everybody comes and listens to it. I don't see why Bengali should be different. Um, it's a beautiful language, got some beautiful heritage music to be able to share with the world. And so it's really nice for us that we get a lot of people who are not non-Bengali, but they do talk about the, the fact that the music has affected them. And I do try to provide some context when I'm singing. So in terms of what you're singing, do you tend to do your own writing? Do you tend to work with other lyricists? Um, what's the kind of, and also the repertoire that you actually perform when you're on stage? Well, in terms of my band work, I'm with two bands. So there's my band Kio, 
and we tend to generally focus on heritage music of, of Bengal and uh, our interpretations of that, although we have been doing some original work. Um, so my friend Lisa Ghazi, she's a writer, a brilliant lyricist, and so when she, she writes lyrics for us, my Bengali is not quite strong enough for that. And um, I tend to work on the music for that, and then the band Oli and I in Kia, we work on uh, arranging it with the rest of the band. So that's one aspect. With the other band uh, that I'm in, that's, uh, that's Kishon Khan's band. It's an Afro-Cuban Bengali jazz band, and it's uh, Loki Dara. And in that one, we also do uh, focus mainly on heritage music, but it's, it's a Bengali folk given an Afro-Latin twist. So it depends on, on the band and the- Where did that come about? Because it's not the average or kind of expected collaboration. Well, <laughs> if you've ever met Kishan Khan, he's not average at all. So it, it's really his baby. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it, that's, uh, that particular band is a lot about his uh, musical uh, exposure and what he's learned and what he want, where he's from as well. So he's doing his bit uh, to work with his heritage in a musical way. So we've mentioned this umbrella term, world music. Um, do you think we will see vocalists singing in Bengali, singing in Bangla, coming out of that big umbrella? Can they actually go into what we know as kind of mainstream pop music? Do you actually foresee any of that happening? Uh, I don't know. It really depends because technology seems to be shaping um, a lot of how we interact with the arts nowadays. And so what seemed unthinkable, say, 20 years ago in terms of how, how much exposure you could get as a musician who's not doing something commercial. Um, that's changed. The, the way music is, is distributed and listened to has changed. So how things will progress, we'll just have to wait and see. For now, I'm just, I'm just focused on actually being able to get what we've got out there. And you've also done a lot of international traveling as well. Um, what's your kind of do you have like an agenda or do you have like a journey ahead of you that you'd like to go on? Um, how are you kind of visualising your future as a musician, as a vocalist? Ooh, um, no, I don't, to answer the, the question simply, no, I don't have an agenda other than to actually be able to just make music, um, to express myself and to express where I'm from and what I do and why I feel like there's meaning in it to see if it connects with anyone else. Um, and we find that a lot of people who are, say, not necessarily of Bengali heritage, but are of some heritage and another heritage, tend to identify a lot with themes of um, nostalgia or homesickness or, or longing and all of those things, love, all of the human emotions that we have, that we all share. Um, so to that end, it's not about a particular place, and therefore I'm not thinking of where it will then take me. Um, I think if I just continue with the music, eventually, you know, enough people will hear it and that, that will do. So, Sohini, are there any particular projects you're working on at the moment that we can look forward to? Um, well, besides the bands, besides Kyo and Loki Dara, uh, I also happen to be a founding member of an arts company called Gomala Collective. And uh, we are currently working on two projects. One is uh, a, f a documentary film about the Biranganas of Bangladesh. So that's called Rising Silence and hopefully um, that will be ready soon. We're also working on a stage play that's based on the legend of Bon Bibi from the uh, Shundarbon forest in Bengal in India uh, and in Bangladesh. And that play is happening this summer, so 2016. Uh, there's a whole tour um, that we've got going on. And me personally, I'm also touring with um, the wonderful Akram Khan, who I'm sure you know is a wonderful dancer and choreographer. So his new production, Until the Lions, is currently touring everywhere. Um, so. I'm keeping myself busy. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for finding the time to come and speak to us. It's been a real pleasure speaking to you. Thank you, Mantas. I hope you enjoyed hearing all about Sohini Alam's incredible musical journey. Oitajor Presents will be back soon.